I'm Mara Menzi. And I'm John Mukini Namai. We are both storytellers from Kenya. Together with the meteorologists, we travel to the climate front lines of northern Kenya to discover how people there are using indigenous knowledge to adapt to climate change. This podcast, Listening to the Rainmakers, shares what we learned on our journey. Episode 3. We have been adapting for decades. The forecasting of the weather using the goat's intestines and other signs felt very timeless. But we saw that in many places, the scientific meteorologists are actually working closely with the holders of indigenous traditional knowledge, which they often abbreviate to ITK. Joseph told us a story which demonstrated just how necessary the rainmakers are in South Sudan. These traditional uh, rainmakers are doing enough, only that there, there is need for the interconnection uh, between them and the, and the meteorologists. Because when they call for the rains and the rain comes, it works. And when they tell you uh, the changes in the upcoming uh, weather, it comes to reality. Like example, last year, 2021, there was a communication done by one of the, uh, by one of the rainmakers in a place called uh, Awul East, that is one joke. The man called the people, he told them that there is going to be uh, good production, but the disease for the crops will come. Then he asked the people to, to prepare, and in the preparation, he was asking them to engage with his advice. Some people from the church, some people who have been going to the churches, try to decampaign these uh, rainmakers. The messages were almost to be turned down. And then they wanted to be challenging the rainmakers, saying that these people, uh, what they are doing is, uh, is an evil act. So they said, OK, it is, uh, you say it's an evil act, let them just say, whoever he asked some people, that if there are people who believe in us, can take our messages. And those who don't believe in us can go on with what they believe. So those, surprisingly, there were some farmers who accepted his advice. And uh, those farmers became successful in production. And that's when, because in my talk before, I said the relationship of these people with the government is so stronger. When that one happened, at the end, during the harvest time, and those who listened to them have become successful, the government went to that rainmaker with appreciation later. The government appreciated them. The government appreciated them for the role they have been playing. And the government even uh, asked them if they could extend the rainmaking to other communities. Also talking to the meteorologist, uh, Francis, who was our host, he's a very dedicated person. He needs an award. Like he has a network of 300 chiefs. And he goes to his own pocket, like going to the to the ITK ceremonies, whereby like whereby the elders are uh, looking at the intestine. I will observe. Francis will take notes, so he will attend those sessions and uh, integrate the ITK and also the methodologies like the part, like how how the science and the ITK marry. So it was very interesting to see Francis and also the counterpart in West Pokot, how they would not uh, put aside the ITK, they will incorporate it. So there's a strong thing about, um, I would say like involving the, it's a participatory, what, a, what we saw is a, it's a participatory session, like the ITK and the scientists, like they work hand in hand and um, to come up with the regional focus, and also one interesting thing is that having a, a WhatsApp or sharing with a focus. We talked with another Kenyan government official who is also working hand in hand with holders of indigenous traditional knowledge. And when you're talking about how a lot of people are embracing technology or the new, new ways as well, how is information being passed from the department, from the government level? How does that trickle down to the, to the rural communities? 
Yeah, from the weather experts, normally when we get information, uh, we have the structures like now, the, the, we have the local, uh, the county government and we have the national government. So we normally work together. The structures that we have, for example, now at the headquarters here, we have um, structures down, which has been scaled down up to the grassroots level. We have the deputy uh, assistant county commissioners, ACCs, and then we have the chiefs, the assistant chiefs, we have the village elders, and then now the community. And then again, as a community, we have the council of elders. That is also which helps us a lot. When we have such information, we normally come together. The council of elders, they have their structures, they have their chairman, and uh, we bring them on board whenever we have uh, meetings. And when they, whenever there is any information, we normally use them. Even if it is an issue of uh, early warning system, we also bring them on board. Yeah. So that uh, they can be able also to pass the information up to the common person on the ground. Every, every community has their own uh, traditional ways of doing these things. Yeah. And at government level, is that uh, those traditional ways of doing things, are they given value? Are they seen as being important to, to kind of generating information and, and also passing down, transmitting information? Yeah, it's very important because we recognize them as a government. Yeah, we do recognize them. And especially, uh, as I said earlier, when we, have informa when we have seminars, we also bring them on board so that they can be able to share and give us information on what is happening. One of the consistent things we noticed in both Turkana and West Pokot is when people thought things had started to change. People agreed that there had always been conflict and cattle rustling, but in terms of climate change, most people put it around the 1980s. That was when people began to notice that there was more drought than before. They were used to the drought patterns of, say, drought every five years, but from the 1980s it became every four years then every three years, and now it might be every two years. They have also noticed that the patterns of weather are less predictable than they were before. They really depend on their ITK, when their chief notices the flowering of trees or other signs that tell them when and where to move their cattle. That is what they follow. ITK holds incredible power. We are trying to assist the community uh, especially when it comes to early warning systems, so that they be able to prepare themselves. For example, if you are drought, if it's an issue of drought, we normally give them information prior, so that they can be able to prepare themselves and to, uh, to, uh, to mitigate that uh, the impact of uh, maybe if it is drought, they are given that information so that they are prepared. And we also intervene in terms of we give them maybe relief food, yeah. And uh, for a other areas, we might be able to give them pasture uh, from the relief from the government. So we also have the county government. They also have been very close, very, very handy, and uh, assist the community. We have really been struck by how communities and officials have been adapting collaboratively and creatively for a long time. In the next episode, we find out how arts and culture are helping tackling some of the conflicts caused by climate change. Thanks to our project partners, Adverse Kamba and Ikpak, and the project funders, the British Council.